Welcome to part two of this tutorial where we'll be looking at structural data extraction from Revit. So in the first tutorial we was able to extract data using ODBC drivers and populate a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So here I have the spreadsheet open just to take a look at some of the relationships here. So you can see that we have lots and lots of tabs across the bottom here. These tabs are basically all of the model categories that exist in Revit. So I'm just going to fast track here to some of the tabs that we'll uh, particularly focus on. So I'd like to take a look at floors, for example. So here you can see that this is instance property data. So notice here I have the element ID and then the type ID, which we'll use as a unique key. And you can then see we have all of the other expected properties such as volume, area, level and so on. If I click the next table in here on the next tab, floor types, you can see here that we have that same unique key, which is this ID. And that will then allow us to tie the information to things like uh, type name or the family name and so on. So let's now switch to Power BI where we'll start to import this information and then create some visualizations. So here we are in Microsoft Power BI. In this example, I've created a new file and I'm currently using the desktop version of the software. The first task is to connect to the data source. So you can see here on the home ribbon, we have get data. And the great thing with Power BI is we can connect to all sorts of different data sources. So for example, I could have stored the data in a database, um, you know, web page, text file, and so on. To keep life simple, we're just going to connect to an Excel spreadsheet. So of course, the first prompt here is to go ahead and select our data source. So this is Revit XLSX, and I'll click open. Now it will just take a few minutes to connect to the data. And then what we'll need to do is actually select those various different tables that we were just looking at in Excel. Now, of course, I don't want them all in here. Um, we only want a handful of them just for this example. So for example, let's go down to where we saw floors and we want potentially floors and floor types. I'd also take out levels and we'll do the same for structural framing. So we'll come down and choose structural framing types and structural framing. So that's the data that I want. I can now click load. Now, if at a later point you want to actually load in more data, of course you can do that. So it'll just take a few minutes to load these in and set up some queries and so on. Okay, and now the data is loaded in. Now we need to begin by making some relationships to these tables that we were just talking about in Excel. So to do this, I'm going to click the model button and you can now see that we have those various different tables showing here. And we can just really move these tables around to get the uh, tables in a better location if we want to. So let's just shift these, maybe something like that. And we'll keep shifting these around. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is create some links. So notice up on the home ribbon, I've got the manage relationships command. We'll go ahead and select that. And I'm gonna click new. So as an example, what we're gonna do is link the floor table to the floor types. So here I can select floors and then I can select floor types. And the idea here is we can now link this data together. So you can see here that I've got a type ID that's the column I want to link to the ID column here. Now in this example, you can see that the cross filter direction, I want this to be both, so it can go both ways. And I'll just go ahead and click OK and close. And that relationship is now built, as you can see here. So let's now have a look at how we'd visualize that. So I'm going to select the report button and that will take us back into the page. And the first thing we'll do is we'll now use the fields tab over here. And I'm going to open up or start with the floor types. And you can see here I have type name. Now, as soon as I check that, you can see it creates a table and all of the floor types are now visualized and shown. Now here, this is where the cross data will work. I can now open up the floors table. Don't forget that this is the instance data. And for example, now I might want to understand the volume used. And now you can see here that it's summing the volume of each of these types and giving us a total at the bottom. So if we wanted to quickly visualize that now, we've got these visualization tools over here. And you know, for example, here I could uh, select a donut chart 
and you can now see that information and data is visualized. Now, of course, the great thing with Power BI is you select the various different data sets here. You can see that it will then visualize those in the chart and it will also cross reference those to other charts. So here we could make another chart in here just using the same uh, couple of tables in this example. So what I'm going to do here now is potentially use a level over here and you can now see I've got the levels of each of the floors. And in here we'll use the type name. And again here you can see now I've got another table here, this time a bar chart basically showing me the uh, levels and each of the floors. Now notice as I click these data sets, I can then visualize the data in the other table. And of course, we can then continue to do that for the structural framing and any other pages we wanted. Now here, I've got one page active, but of course I could click a new page down here. And then a real nice thing with this is we can then publish that data and just share that as a web link. So it's very, very useful. Okay, hope that uh, simple tutorial has been useful and have fun making dashboards.